New details in the murder case of Yale graduate student Annie Lay, who will be remembered today at a private memorial service in New York, her funeral Saturday in California. The man accused of her murder, Ray Clark, remains jailed on $3 million bond and remains a mystery. But the media has been pressing everyone who ever knew him to speak out. And this morning, one young woman is going to do just that. She was his high school girlfriend. And she has a message for all young girls about romance that leads to fear and Sharon Alfonsi begins us. This is Ray Clark. This morning, he sits in jail accused of the brutal murder of Annie Lay. But friends of Clark can't make any sense of the allegations against him. He was just the kind of guy who would say hi to everybody, just a genuinely nice person. I never saw anything unusual, weird, angry, nothing. I didn't see. I didn't. Margaret Brady went to high school with Clark. She remembers him as a star high school baseball player who volunteered and helped the homeless. A member of the Asian Awareness Club. Classmates say he was quiet, friendly, popular. He was very intelligent. He's a good kid. But one person's memories of Clark aren't so fond. His high school girlfriend, who reportedly had a tumultuous relationship with him. In the hours after his arrest, she added this entry to her Facebook page. Yeah, it's been a rough few days. I've known since Sunday, and I'm handling this as best I can. It's just bringing back everything. I feel like I'm 16 all over again. A single clue from Clark's past that could shed light on how a high school standout today stands accused of murder. He's expected to be back in court October 6th. For Good Morning America, Sharon Alfonsi, ABC News, New York. And just a few minutes ago, I spoke with this young woman about her message for other young girls and the boyfriend she remembers, Jessica Del Rocco, and her mother, Lynn Del Rocco. Go back with me when you okay. were 16. Tell me about him, because everything I read says he was an athlete, good student. Yeah, he was very popular. He was, you know, a very nice guy. Everybody loved him. He was a good student. He was a great baseball player. And, I mean, at first he was, you know, he's perfect. He was charming. He was sweet. He took me out. It was great. I mean, and we had mom a mom loved him? Yeah, he was very nice. Yeah. And then what happened that first caused you alarm? Um, about three months into everything, he started to get um, a little controlling in the fact where it was what I could and couldn't wear and where I couldn't go and how I should speak and, like, stuff like that. And then just from there, it just escalated. But in a way that frightened you, a way that unnerved you? Well, it, you? Just, it was just unusual for me. I'd never had somebody tell me what I could and couldn't do before. I mean, and that's just the way that it that it started with him. You mean at the level of everyday things? Yeah, everything exactly. Everything you wore, everything you did? Yeah. You know, it's don't go here and don't be friends with these boys and these girls, you're okay. And, you know, you're talking too much or you're not talking loud enough, stuff like that. And did you say why? What, what, what is this? I, you know, it would just cause such a big fight that it wasn't even worth it. I mean, I was 16 years old. I, I didn't. What about the temper? Um, it escalated a lot after that. He would get very angry, you know, often. What if does he very didn't... angry frighten you? Yeah, he would frighten me. Um, he did get physical. It, it escalated a lot after, I mean, with the controlling issue, it escalated from there. Um, and when you say get physical? Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't want to talk about that. There are certain things the police exactly. I'm, have requested you not to talk about. Yeah. But it was physical and it was scary? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There were times that he did frighten me. I mean, he... He what? <laughs> I mean, you know, he got this little look in his eye and... Sometimes it was better just to do what he said, just to avoid the Would fight. Would this be a sudden thing where he'd be one person one minute and then just dramatically change or was this change fairly constant once it once it happened it, it was happening more often as the relationship progressed like if things didn't go his way then he'd make them go his way you talk about the end what happened at the end i just i wanted out i wanted i realized that i didn't want to be in this type of relationship anymore that i wanted it to be over and when you told him this what he didn't want it to be over and an incident occurred, and I took the steps that I thought would be the best way to handle it, and I went through the school, and I went through the police, and it... Wait a minute, wait a minute. When you say he didn't want... Yeah, he didn't to want to break what up. Did, what did he do? 
I can't comment on that. But it was frightening enough that you thought at Absolutely. some point you might need police help. Absolutely. To keep him away. Yeah. Was it explosive anger, yelling, or was it something more, more submerged? No, it was anger, yelling, grabbing. What happened afterwards then, after you broke up? Um, for about two weeks, I was escorted from the school to my car, and then it just died down. I mean, he started dating somebody new, I started dating somebody new, and... And he left you, you and, alone. Yeah, it was, it, was right. it was over, you know? I mean, we just, I lived my life, and he went to his life, and that was that. Did you talk to your mom about it? Not until the end. And you never saw any of this no, he was, different no, side. He was great at the house, you know. Did he ever try to say anything to you about it afterwards? Did he try to apologize? Did he try to explain I mean, why he, he was so outraged? He apologized for um, ever, you know, emotionally or hurting me in any way. I mean, he apologized for that. He said he always had good intentions. Just, I mean, he just lied off the handle. Looking back. If you would say to somebody else, here's the first thing that I saw, and I'd like everybody else to think about this too, who might be encountering if it. If you're in a relation, my opinion is if you're in a relationship where there's somebody who's trying to control your every move and try and change you and tell you what you can and cannot do and who you can and cannot see, that's just, that's just, you know, a starting point for things to escalate into something much more worse. I know that it's been very hurtful to you that people who know nothing about your situation have been speculating. And, and that's yeah. the thing. And what is, have they said? What did you hear? Whatever happened between Ray and I was six years ago. I have absolutely nothing to do with this case. Yes, we had a relationship. Yes, it was not your normal, average high school relationship and things did get out of control but I did everything that I thought I could at that time to get myself out of this situation. And again, I know you're coming today because you want to first of all speak once and have it over with yeah. but also because anybody else out there should have things to think about. And Absolutely. I mean if any about. if any girl feels uncomfortable in a relationship that they're in, they you, they, I know how hard it is. I, they just need to dig deep and rely on the support of your family and your friends to, to take a stand and realize that, no, you don't deserve to be treated like that, that you deserve better. There's no reason that somebody should belittle you and, you know, make you feel like you're nothing because, obviously, the, you know, you're something. You're a wonderful person, and even if nobody else sees it, as long as you see it, that's all that matters. Thank you so much. And again, that message is the reason Jessica and Lynn Del Rocco say they came this morning to speak.